In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son, handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Exeret. Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from the graves, O my people. And I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. The Lord, there is mercy, 
Reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh, you are in the Spirit. Since the Spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is in you because of righteousness. If the Spirit of God, who raised Jesus from the dead, dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his Spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The sisters of Lazarus sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard this, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, through, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and she met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on that last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. 
Whoever believes in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. Jesus was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, his hands and his feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a shroud. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Through the words of the Gospel, may our sins be wiped away. We all have pictures taken of us at some point or other that we hope have not survived for posterity. And one of the pictures that was once taken of me was wrapped all up with bands of cloth like Lazarus. And the reason was that I was working on my doctorate in Belgium on this passage, the account of the raising of Lazarus, and a crew of younger American seminarians who lived on the same corridor as I did decided they were going to sponsor, uh, I don't know, it was Mardi Gras or Halloween party, but anyway, they, they made all these bands of stuff and insisted I had to dress like Lazarus. And I did, and somebody took pictures But anyway, hopefully they've gone. This account of the raising of Lazarus, like the other two accounts that were heard last week and the week before, are actually the shorter versions. So it tells you how major a story each one of these was. The encounter with the woman of Samaria at the well two weeks ago, the healing of the man born blind a week ago, and now the raising from the dead of Lazarus of Bethany. This is the greatest of all of the miracles or the signs performed by Jesus. Great is simply by virtue of the fact that it is raising somebody from the dead. And second, great is by how long that somebody had been dead. We have three different accounts of Jesus raising the dead. The first, the daughter of Jairus. We do not know her name, only her father's name. And when he first came to Jesus, she was sick, and he was afraid for her. And so Jesus went, but by the time he got there, she had died. And so they were greeted with the news, 
Let the master go, she's already dead. But Jesus went in and took her by the hand and said, little girl, get up. And the very Aramaic words have been preserved in the gospel. And she got up and he gave her over to her parents. The second account was of a young man, the son of the widow of Nain. We do not know his name or his mother's name, only that she was a widow and where they came from, the town of Nain. He was being carried out for burial. Since the Jews were very careful to bury on the day of death before the sun went down, we can presume he's been dead a number of hours, but certainly no more than 24 hours. And Jesus was moved with pity at this widow whose only son was being carried out for burial. And he touched the boy, and the man got up, and he gave her, him over to his mother. But in this account, this is not the daughter of someone who comes to Jesus for help. It's not an anonymous young man whom Jesus encounters walking through the countryside. It is a very close friend, part of a, a little family who were welcoming to Jesus. As we read in St. Luke's Gospel, Martha and Mary, and we all know that story. And Martha, ha Martha you worry about too many things. She's trying to get things ready while Mary is listening at the feet of Jesus for his teaching. And Lazarus, now their brother, and when they send for Jesus, mysteriously he delays coming. And so by the time word gets to him, he delays and he comes back. The man is not only dead and buried, but four days dead and buried. And before Jesus does anything, it is not Mary who comes out to him. We might have expected that reading Luke's gospel. It is Martha. She leaves their guests in their home who following Jewish custom have come to assist them in their mourning after burial. And she comes out and she challenges Jesus. If you had been here, my brother would not have died. But then she also speaks words of trust. But I know that even now, Whatever you ask of God, he will give to you. And Jesus says, well, your brother will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And Martha says, I know that he will rise again on the last day. And then Jesus gives her the most important of all the teachings in the whole of the New Testament. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even though he or she dies, they will live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this, Martha? And she says, yes, Lord, I believe. And she goes on, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who was to come. And implicitly in that is I believe that whatever you want to do, you will do. And it's only after Jesus gives that teaching. And if you saw me looking at the windows while Stephen was getting ready to read the gospel, I was checking to see which window. And it's the third one here. The beautiful windows, these. The I am sayings of Jesus. I am the resurrection and the life. It's only after giving that teaching that Jesus then goes to the tomb of a man who's been dead and buried for four days. And even after his sister says, don't open the tomb, he's been dead four days, he calls him out, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, wrapped with bands of stuff. And Jesus gave him back to his sisters. Lazarus died again. John's Gospel suggests not too long after that. But the most important part of that account, it wasn't for Lazarus, striking as that was indeed for him and his sisters and the town, little town of Bethany. It was for the, all of us who would follow after Jesus. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, 
Even though he or she dies, they shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And together we place all of our needs and all of our prayers before God, our Heavenly Father. For Pope Francis and bishops in countries where our faith is suppressed and believers are persecuted and jailed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people throughout the world who will receive education, health, care, and clean water through contributions made to development and peace, and for those who generously support it, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Bishop Christian and all the bishops of Canada in their continuing work to reconcile all people in Canada to each other, to the Church, and to Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection of children in the womb, mothers and families in distress, and vulnerable elderly and challenged people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Deacon Stephen Mawinney and Deacon Rio, David Rio, who will be ordained to the priesthood on May 14th, and for young men and women thinking about a religious vocation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people who are ill, awaiting surgery or active treatment, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, Mary Margaret Connell, Lori Dumont, Joseph, e Joseph McNamee, and Norman Wickens, and for their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for all your blessings. We bring all of our needs and our prayers before you. We ask you to hear them and to answer them through Christ Jesus, our Lord. And please be seated while our offertory is gathered. At this time, if you have your, your envelope for the development and peace, you may also place it in this same basket.
And pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, Graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man, he wept for Lazarus, his friend, and as eternal God, raised him from the tomb just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we are claimed. of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The 
the mist of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Christian, our Bishop, and all the clergy, Remember your servants, whom you have called from this world to yourself, those members of the Berry family who have died, Barb Finlay, Diana McNeil, Donna Dutcher, Teresa Como, and all of the souls in purgatory. Grant that they, who were united with your Son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, 
who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And bow down your heads. Bless, O Lord, your people, who long for the gift of your mercy, and grant that what at your prompting they desire, they may receive by your generous gift, through Christ our Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Bye.